Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio. I'm Khalid Maidan. So yesterday, legendary tennis player Rafael Nadal won his 21st Grand Slam singles title over an amazing career that has unfortunately been plagued by a lot of injury. And one of those injuries in particular has been his chronic patellar tendinopathy. However, he's obviously been doing some really important things to manage this injury over the course of his career. And we're going to be diving into today that injury itself, as well as some of the key tips that he's probably been working on in order to sustain his career and his success as much as he can. So if you enjoy this video, we'd be super grateful if you could smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best content. But otherwise, if you're ready, let's dive in. So the patella tendon, let's start with some of the anatomy. So the key muscles related to the patella tendon are the quadriceps muscles. And these are vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis, and the major one over the top, rectus femoris. These four muscles insert collectively into the quadriceps tendon, which we can see proximal to the patella. And distal to this is where we see the patella tendon. The patella tendon, which effectively is an extension of the quadriceps tendon, connects from the patella down towards the tibial tuberosity of the tibia. Being linked with the quadriceps muscles, this tendon is loaded during knee extension. But in particular, a patella tendinopathy is often referred to as jumper's knee, as it is the explosive movements of jumping, landing, and pushing off when sprinting, which seem to irritate this tendon the most. Now, this is particularly interesting in the case of Rafael Nadal because he is said to be a very explosive tennis player. Lots of speed, lots of running around, and very active on the court. And interestingly, his right knee seems to be the one most affected by the patella tendinopathy. Now, being a left-handed tennis player, when he serves, he's going to be mainly using his right knee in order to generate the power to push up when he's producing his serve and then also control the landing. So that could be a factor. We also think about the fact that he's going to be pushing off that right leg when he's changing direction or when he's suddenly sprinting to get to the ball. But another factor that's been talked about a lot in the case of Rafa is the fact that he is known generally as a hard court specialist tennis player. Don't get me wrong, he's fantastic playing on all surfaces, but it's known that he often has chosen a lot of the hard courts as his speciality and that he played on a lot of hard courts growing up. And the suggestion being is that, especially in the early part of his youth career, playing on those hard courts a lot of the time may have been a factor in his patella tendinopathy and why it has lasted for such a long period of time during his career. So next, moving on to physiotherapy and how we actually manage these patients in practice. Now, this is the case for any patella tendinopathy, but particularly when it comes to athletes like Rafa, load management is critically important, particularly to ensure that Rafa can sustain the amount of activity he's doing across the calendar year, whether that be in his training sessions, in his recovery sessions, and then in the tournaments. So what you often might need to think about with these athletes in practice is ensuring that you look at the calendar year, work out when the most important matches and competitions and tournaments are and plan around that so it might be that the recovery period uh, occurs a few months before the tournament meaning that that patella tendon gets plenty of opportunity to rest then we have a gradual build up in activity a gradual build up in those explosive movements of jumping landing and sprinting leading up to the tournament so that hopefully by the time it's uh, the competition starting that that patella tendon is an optimum state in order to be able to produce those movements without being too irritated. So another thing that you'll commonly see with Rafael Nadal is when he uses a patella tendon strap across the anterior portion of his knee at his patella tendon. And this patella tendon strap is used by lots of athletes with a patella tendinopathy. And you may well see this in those sports that have those explosive movements such as sprinting, basketball and of course tennis whereby the patella tendon strap helps manage the patella tendinopathy. And it's very commonly seen now and widely accepted that patella tendon straps are used even by the top level athletes, perhaps because psychologically it helps them become comfortable with the fact that they're able to go into tournaments because their knee is being supported, but also because of the real important factor 
they need to perform and they don't want their patellar tendinopathy limiting them when it comes to that competition. Now, what about PRP injections, platelet-rich plasma injections? This is something that Rafa has had during his career, and the idea being is that within PRP injection therapy, an athlete such as Rafa will be injected with a concentration of their own platelets in the injection, which is suggested to be positive in accelerating healing for the injury itself, in his case, the patellar tendinopathy. So the evidence behind PRP injections generally is not conclusively positive. There are some studies that suggest it's a good thing, some that suggest it's a bad thing. And I suppose when it comes down to an athlete like Rafa, you're in a situation where sometimes you really need something to try and help you with your injury. And it may have been the case that at some point in his career, he tried PRP injections as a trial and found that it was positive for him and therefore might have been something that was used more than once, who knows, during the course of his career. So finally, on to exercises. And it's no surprise that quadricep strengthening exercises are going to play a critical role in managing patellar tendinopathy. I personally like to start with isometric strengthening. This has been researched with fantastic evidence by the great Pete Malieras. And from there, I like to move on to exercises such as leg extension machine, leg press machine and squats as well, which all play a critical factor as a progression from isometric strengthening. Now, particularly in the case of Rafael Nadal, we talked about those explosive movements and the demands of those explosive movements on his patellar tendon. So that's where plyometric exercises in particular are super important for managing speed and power movements. And so there you might be thinking about things like box jumps, squat jumps, jumping and landing, hurdling, different movements that are going to incorporate speed and power. And if you'd like more details about those movements and the exercises I've discussed a second ago, we do have another video which is about patella tendinopathy rehab specifically. And you can find that in the description below or as a link at, for one of the end slates at the end of the video. So a final comment on patella tendinopathies and how challenging they sometimes are to treat as therapists, but how difficult they must be for athletes to be able to manage themselves not only physically but also psychologically when they are missing tournaments missing events and missing training it requires a lot of patience and a lot of dedication and that's clearly one thing that Rafael Nadal has in abundance the perseverance that he must have had to go through in order to keep picking himself up after each of these injuries and then make it to 21 grand slams incredibly impressive and we give him so much credit for that but guys that ends our video and i really hope you've enjoyed watching it if you have please check out the links in the description below where you can find details of our social media accounts including our instagram at clinical physio and our website clinicalphysio.com my name's khalid maydan thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again really soon right here on clinical physio